Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I just want to associate myself with everything that Senator Durbin just said. Hit the nail on the head. I also want to thank all of you for the work that you do. As we hear more and more about the situation with these young people coming across the border, you know what my ears are hearing? Round them up and ship them back. Sounds like we're dealing with cattle or some kind of livestock. Just round them up and ship them back. Senator Murkowski had it right. This is a humanitarian crisis. Again, you, Senator Durbin, talked about a couple of cases. I suggest anybody want to know what's behind a lot of this, read Enrique's Journey. It's a great book. Read it. Now I have a problem with the administration, this administration. On one hand, they say we want to send kids back as soon as possible. Then they turn around and say, well, but these kids are escaping violence and drugs and sexual abuse and gangs. How do you reconcile those two? Ship them back as soon as possible, and they're escaping violence and drugs? That doesn't sound to me like those two statements are compatible. How do they exist side by side? The focus, our focus, had to be simply on making sure these kids are first safe, that they're fed, that they're clothed, that they're sheltered, and that they get not only good health services, but mental health services, and under the law, that they have every meaningful, that's a key word, meaningful opportunity to apply for asylum. Are we a country of laws? That's what the law says. Now, there are some that want to modify this law, and I hear voices from my, this, old, my, this administration want to modify the law. Now, Secretary Johnson, I, I, I have no doubt that you are a good and decent and honorable person, and I think you do a great job. But you want flexibility. There's danger in flexibility, not just because of you, but everybody that works under you, and the Border Patrol. A lot of these kids that come over there, and they see someone in uniform, it's a flashback to what they just came from, where the people in uniform may have been beating them up and on the, side of, on the side of the drug lords. Are they going to open up about who they are and what they are? That's why we have a law that says you've got to transform in 72 hours to HHS. Now, HHS is supposed to provide all of these things for these kids, shelter, clothing, meaningful counsel, people to stand alongside of them so that they can tell their story, so they can apply meaningfully for asylum. You can't do that with a border patrol. I'm sorry, you just can't do it. And you can't do it just as somebody comes across the border. They need to be taken in, as I said, and, and given these protections under our laws, under international law under international law. Some people want to modify the law to let DHS ship them back right away. I hear this from the administration. And you may say, Secretary Johnson, that you're going to be very careful and stuff on this. That's why we have laws. That's why we set it up this way. I don't know who's coming after you. I don't know how long you're going to be there. And I don't know all the people that work underneath you and how good they are. They may have in their head, the best thing is round them up and ship them back. I rely upon health and human services to make sure these kids are protected and that they have their full legal rights in this country. Now, they're supposed to be transferred in 72 hours. Now, it's what, six or seven days before they get transferred that they're held. And now HHS, they don't have the wherewithal to do it, to take care of these kids, the mental health providers, the social workers, child advocates, who can look after not, the, not rounding them up and shipping them back, but the best interest of the child when they arrive here and protecting their rights under U.S. and international law. So, we have a situation where I'm sorry I have to disagree with this administration. 
This administration should be saying we should follow the law. These kids need to be protected. They need to have HHS protect them and care for them and give them every meaningful right to apply for asylum. Now, the problem is HHS doesn't have the money to do it. They should do it, but they don't have the money to do that. That's what this supplemental is about, is to allow HHS to follow the law, which they aren't right now, but they can't. They can't follow the law because they don't have the money to do it. They can't transfer them in 72 hours, my fellow senators, because they don't have the money to do it. So that's why this supplemental, Madam Chair, as you said, is so critical. We can't turn our back on these kids. We can't hold ourselves up, as Senator Durbin said, as some paradigm, paradigm of human rights protections in the United States, and then say, round them up and ship them back. Should they say that to the Syrians that are escaping? Or other refugees around the world, round them up and ship them back? We're better than that. And I, and I have to disagree with my friend from South Carolina. We are not being overrun by these kids. We're a country of 300 million people. We're talking about, what, 50,000, 60,000, 90,000 at the most. That's overrunning America? Nonsense. We can deal with this. Now, lest anyone think, well, Harkin, you just want to let them keep coming. And No, I'd say, look, we've got to work with those other countries. We have to do things in those other countries. It's a complex issue, as some of you have stated. It's not going to be solved overnight. It's not going to be solved with Southcom and a, a few military people. It's not going to be solved with that. It's going to be solved over a longer period of time. But in the meantime, the single most important thing is to take care of these kids, to make sure they're safe, they're housed, they're sheltered, they're clothed, they're fed, and they have legal protections, and they can apply for asylum meaningfully, not with a border patrol, not as soon as they come across the border. I read your testimony but after they've had due process and where HHS can take them in and provide them the kind of shelter and support that they need. Now, after that, we can talk about returning them, but not until they've had adequate counsel, advocates for them to stand by their side, to let them know what their legal rights are in this country. So I, I hate to be so emotional about it, but I just, when I hear this coming from the administration, ship them back, We've got to do everything as soon as possible. But they're fleeing violence and drugs and gangs. No. They're fleeing violence and drugs and gangs and all kinds of things like that, yes. I disagree with my friend from South Carolina also, that you're reinforcing bad habits with bad habits. I've never considered a bad habit for any human being to leave a bad situation where they're being killed, beat up, sexually violated, denied their basic human rights, denied the opportunity to live a life, and they want to seek it someplace else? That's not a bad habit. That's, that's sort of in the human spirit that I thought we'd like to extol in this country. So I guess I've run out of time, and I've used up my time. And so, therefore, I guess I don't have a question. <laughs> but I hope I, I hope I've made my point.